Hello, Dark Reader, and welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. I'm your host, Katie. Today, we are going to be looking through the McMaster's Guide to Homicide, Murder Your Employer. If you are on YouTube, you're lucky enough to see this awesome cover. Join us on our other socials. If you are listening on our podcast, you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at Dark Side of the Library. If there are books that you want to go check out, you can find us also on Amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library or DarkSideOfTheLibrary.com. There's my spiel for today. Thanks so much for your patience. So, Murder Your Employer, uh, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide. This is by Rupert Holmes. We're going to be talking about him first, the summary, and then kind of how I feel about the book. Just to spoil it a bit, uh, I gave it a four out of five stars, so I thought it was actually fun. It's a good, decent read, uh, great for springtime. Actually, it's great for all year round. I like those kinds of books. So Rupert Holmes, I had no idea, like I've heard of Rupert Holmes before, but I just, I've not, I couldn't pull up, you know, who Rupert Holmes actually is, but he's won many awards and he's kind of a renaissance man. Like he's done songwriting, he is a singer, he's done scripts, he's done musicals, he's done books, mysteries, he's won awards for some of his mystery novels. Some of, I think only one novel actually has become a movie. The thing that he is probably the most known for is the Escape the Pina Colada song. Why would you ever want to escape? But that's kind of one of his big, big things. And also him from 1980. He has been around writing, uh, doing music and composing, just all kinds of stuff for many years. He's uh, very prolific and very well established. So it was cool to learn more about him and also like read this book at the same time. So that's a little bit about Rupert Holmes. You can find more information about him in our show notes and I highly recommend you do. He's fun. So let me tell you the summary of Murder Your Employer, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide. Here's a question. For you, have you ever had somebody in your life that you just wish that would cease to exist? Like somebody that is, you know, the most bothersome, worse than bothersome, just somebody that is really terrorizing your life. If they just were gone. Oh, how breathtaking that would be. Um, so you've probably never heard of the McMaster's Conservatory, which is a dedicated place to the art of homicide, uh, or deletion, as they prefer to call it. So to actually gain admission, you a you have to have an ethical reason for committing homicide, and you might be allowed into the Poison Ivy League <laughs> stature of the school. I really love it. The location of the school is not known at all. The setting is probably in the 1950s-ish era, which that took me a really long time to figure out. Not only are you learning the art of homicide from well-established deletists who teach many different topics such as like poisons, etc., or the art of like erotica and seduction uh, to weaponry and guns and all kinds of stuff, escapisms, disguises, but you might even be a target for your classmates. And in order to actually graduate, you have to commit the perfect murder. Otherwise, you will be killed. Prepare for an education that you'll never forget is what the publisher says. There's a lot of witty humor in there, dark humor, of course. Uh, the themes are pretty dark, serious, but they're also really, really fun. It's kind of satirical. Uh, and there's a lot of twists and turns, just a lot of fun stuff in this book. So that is the summary of the story generally. In order to properly talk about how I feel about this novel, I think I actually have to go through some of these chronologically because this book is written in at least four different viewpoints. So we have our viewpoint of kind of. It's not strictly the Dean, so Dean Harbinger Harrow, I love that name. Wouldn't that be great to be born with a name like that? <laughs> Harbinger? Anyway, 
the Dean Harbinger Harrow's perspective is mostly kind of an overwatch of the different students, what they're doing, more open-ended, not quite first person. Then we have Cliff Iverson, who is probably our actual main protagonist. He's the one that we follow from the very beginning of the book all the way to the end. He's definitely the one I was more invested in. And then we have two other characters that kind of just slowly amplify as the book goes on, and that's Dulcie and Gemma. And they have different uh, tasks that they have to do in order to graduate, so we kind of follow them as basically through their graduation process, which is the perfect homicide, right? So I have to go through this a little chronologically, and I'll get to my pros and cons as well. So here's what I really enjoyed about the beginning of the book. It starts off very, very strong. It's fast paced. It's really fun. It's kind of wacky in a cartoony way. <laughs> it's a little unbelievable, but it's fun. So you're kind of thrown into this thing. It, it just reminds me of all my favorite, I don't know, not even quite Archer. It's just, it's ridiculous, some, some of it. And it's just it sets you up to realize that this isn't supposed to be a super serious novel because we start off escalating thinking, oh God, this is going to be really action-packed, really serious. This guy is going through a lot of stuff and he wants to kill his boss. And the guy that I'm talking about is Cliff Iverson. He has an employer who's the worst you can possibly think of. It's like Donald Trump times a million. <laughs> it's awful. He's a terrible person. So he... um. He finally is fed up with it. He has a traumatic past. Uh, one of his former lovers was affected by his boss and many, many other people, too, that he loved. He just feels like his boss needs to go. Like, he's just done with his boss. And it's kind of understandable. So we have a, we begin with a bit of a serious tone here with, with Cliff. And then as we start to escalate through the scene, we realize it's kind of, it's ridiculous a little bit like it's kind of silly but it's really done well so then we go on to our McMaster school the conservatory itself it has this beautiful setting it's a well manicured college it's funny because Cliff and the book kind of calls itself out too because it starts to feel a little bit like a, a dark academia book but Cliff is like, hey, I've already been in college. <laughs> like, he's got an aeronautics degree. He's already done this stuff. And he's like, I'm already back in school again. He even has, like, a cute little crush, too, as the story goes on. So sometimes it felt a little YA as we go through it. But in an endearing way, and it didn't pull too much. It was just kind of light. It's light. Not only that, Dean Harbinger Harrow is... He's so lighthearted and fun and almost compassionate and just not what you would expect from a homicide school. You would think like dictator, you know, like you got to make sure to get this right. He makes murder fun. Yay, murder. It's just, it's kind of hysterical. The place not only has all of those cool things that I mentioned earlier, like poisons and disguise classes, etc., but we also have like, you know, a... They get homemade meals every day, and it's very, very nice. So who's funding this, right? This really nice school. But we have our students. So, and I keep wanting to call them kids because we're, I keep thinking college setting and kids, and sometimes they do silly things and it feels really childish, and I keep forgetting that Cliff is like a man. So we have our uh, students are actually encouraged to have their head on a swivel, be aware of their surroundings, because other students might actually be attempting a murder. So Dean Harbinger Harrow actually specifically says in the novel that it's encouraged to do these things. It's kind of like martial arts where you're constantly practicing having your head on a swivel. Sometimes you're put in these really ter terrible situations, practice makes perfect, but you don't actually do the killing blow. So you might, you know, have them fall in a trap, but, you know, with spikes in it, but 
there's like a net to catch them so that they learn to be aware of where their footing is if that makes sense. There's a lot of weird, fun stuff in the book that's kind of like that, where the students are actually kind of at each other, as well as trying to take these classes and trying to achieve these best scores, because some of the consequences, especially if you don't succeed in your graduation process, you'll die. They'll kill you because it's a homicide school or a deletion school, and they don't want other people to know about it. It's a secret, so, if you know about it and you fail graduation and you go off in the land and you're like, oh, yeah, I went to killing school, it's over east somewhere. Like, that's bad news. They're all trying to compete against each other and also take these classes and because it's, it, their life depends on it. So in order to graduate and compose their thesis, they have to go through four inquiries in order to decide whether or not somebody should be killed, essentially. So one of those things, is murder necessary? So if you're looking at Cliff's boss, like, is murder necessary? Yeah. Like, here's the other question. Have you given your target every last chance to better themselves? So that is something, too. Like, yes. You know, did you test them? And we get more of this later on, and I'll talk about that later. Three is what innocent person might suffer by you, your actions, by killing this person. And then four, we have will this deletion better the life of other people? So those four inquiries need to be filled and basically like, yes, yes, it's all good. Nobody's going to care if this person is gone. Everybody will be better than, yeah, you're free to murder. Hooray in an ethical way. So we have Cliff's perspective. We're going through all of this. He has a very good reason for murder um, and his school, his experience, and all the students around him. And he's he's not a stereotypical, he's not like bloodthirsty or anything. He's just a dude trying to, like, all he wants is his boss to be gone. That's literally the only person in his life that wants to be killed. Like, he wants gone. That's it. Nobody else. It's not like an assassin school where, or a mercenary school. It's just one person. That's it. And here's where I'm going to talk about my cons. We start to integrate two other students into the story, Dulce and Gemma. And because we're trying to build up into the, that story, things get a little muddled. Things start to drag a little bit. I was very invested in Cliff. It's fun, action-packed hilarious sometimes. Cliff's a fun character, and so is the Dean. Having those two are great, but then as you start to kind of rip everything apart and have adding multiple perspectives on top of the diary, uh, just the arching overview and kind of the actions and how the school progresses, and then we start getting Gemma and Dulcie involved and what's going on there, things start to get a little wild. We get some backstory for both of these characters, which starts to do a lot of time flipping where it's like, oh, and then we get more of their perspective. They were side characters and then they start becoming main characters almost. So I think because of that, the book, it was a reduction in the stars for me. It just got slow, dragged on a bit. It wasn't as fun. Not only does uh, the time not time skipping but like the multiple perspectives kind of bog things down but there's a lot of descriptions and the book is just really long i think if maybe it was divided into two different sections or even we had like a three-parter we focused more on um dulcy and Gemma. we later or in another separate novel that might have been fine or if things were tidied up a bit because things were just too long. I understand why Rupert Holmes had all three of those characters going through their thesis or basically like committing homicide to their essential, their bosses. All three of them are trying to kill their bosses. So each one of them ha has different reason, different tactics, and they're just different characters. So I did like that. It just needed to be tidied up a little bit more or separate novels. So it would have been just quicker. Overall, I do give this book a four out of five. I thought it was fun, dark humor, really entertaining. Uh, the Dean is precious and I wish I could have gone to his school. 
personally. I think it's fantastic. I like the concept. I haven't read a book like this necessarily, especially like it's not assassin school where everybody's there to like kill everybody. It's basically like you're only most people are there to just do one homicide. That's it. They're, they only have one person. And there's a lot of ethics questions in there, but delivered in a very entertaining way. I, I really enjoyed it. It's fun. I also did uh, mostly the audiobook, which was delivered by Simon Vance and Neil Patrick Harris, who is a gem, and it was fun. Neil Patrick Harris does Cliff's perspective, and maybe that's, I just knew intuitively, it's Neil Patrick Harris, so I, I was really drawn to Cliff. I wished if they were doing that, they could have had a Gemma and a Dulcie a voice actor as well, but it's fine. I do recommend Murder Your Employer, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide. This is by Rupert Holmes. Thank you so much for listening to this mini so today. I hope it inspired you to go grab this book. If you are interested in any dark reads, check out our show notes at darksideofthelibrary.com. We do have a lot of cool dark stuff coming out. And every Wednesday, we do a whole list of curated books that we have found. They're all horror, gothic, creepy books, paranormal, murder, all kinds of stuff. So if that's up your alley, definitely uh, give us a like, subscribe, and make sure to check all of those out. Fridays, I tend to do mini-sodes and deep dives of books that I've been reading lately. Again, make sure to join us on our socials at Dark Side of the Library and our Amazon Live channel, amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library. We will see you soon. Thanks so much for listening.